killer chip is on the beat.
Thank you. Please be seated. Well, good evening and welcome to you all to this space that's been made sacred in this time of loss with the spirit of love and friendship that you bring as you gather here to remember Janice, better known as Jan, Casey, beloved wife, mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, and dear friend. You come together as family, as friends, colleagues, and neighbors, co-creators of a community that includes everyone here present and those family and friends who couldn't be here with us this evening. You come together to honor Jan in your hearts, holding her dear in your memory as you come to terms with her death. So today we celebrate Jan's life and her spirit not only who she was, but what her life has meant and will always mean. So may each one of you hold on to a shining moment of memory, carrying it in your hearts like a candle, a companion through the journey of loss and grief. And may we all remember that the joy that comes from loving and friendship is something that remains with us always, safe within our hearts. Because now it's through every person who knew her that Jan's memory stays alive, that what she stood for will be carried forth. So may all remember well her smiles, her companionship, her conversations, her life. You know, and Jan will be remembered for many things, among them that dynamic personality, her dry sense of humor, her outspokenness. She was many things. She was loving and bubbly and generous, very creative, genuine, strong-willed, but truly selfless, just to name some of her outstanding characteristics. But now, as the wheel of life turns once more, Jan has moved on to the next phase in her great ongoing journey. She was just 64 years old when she died after a brief and yet courageous journey with cancer. And I know she's going to be greatly missed. And I also know that Jan's life song will continue to echo in your minds and hearts as you continue to feel her in so many special ways through family and friends she always cared about, 
to those things that remind you of her, like gardens. I feel like I'm standing in a beautiful garden right now. And her art. Or just when you're enjoying a nice cup of tea in a bubble bath to relax, you think of Jan. You'll remember her through the dreams she left behind and the beauty she added to your days and in words of wisdom that you still carry with you in the memories that'll never be gone. Yet how do we let go of a loved one? How do we say, I'm ready now to go on without you? How can we ever have a clue of what that really means? And then all of a sudden, the moment is upon us, and there's no turning back. And then we know what grief is, regret, love, all those things that are left undone. Because when someone you love dies, in some ways, it's like the death of a part of you. Because the unique relationship that you had with them is something that can never be replicated. Their death is the ending of one part of your own life story. So today we mourn Jan's death, even as we celebrate her life. Because the two are not mutually exclusive. When we lose a loved one, they, ac they actually go hand in hand. It's all part of the circle of life. And so we acknowledge the pain of losing Jan and the joy of having loved her. And I'm just gonna in interrupt myself for a moment. There are lots of people standing at the back. All of these seats are empty. Please come forward, have a seat. It's okay, you're not disturbing anything. Please come on in, have a seat. It gets kind of long standing back there. Great. Sorry, I didn't mean to make a spectacle of it, but hate to see people standing with all those empty seats sitting there. Great. Welcome, everyone. You know, I just want to mention that, you know, the truth is grief is a universal experience and at the same time, it's a very personal journey. You'll all find your pathway through grief in your own way, in your own time, which is as it should be. But what's important to remember is to be gentle and be kind with yourself and with those around you who may be grieving quite differently. Let your grief transform you and show you how to love Jan in a whole new way as you go on now without her physical presence. And as that grief moves through you, remember also to keep thinking about all those good times you shared with Jan over the years. And to that end, I'd like to invite Jan's husband, Kirk, along with her children, Casey, that's Jan's oldest, and she does go by Casey, Lee, Aaron, and Kyle. I'd like them to come up and share their tribute now. of a narrow little passageway. Hi. Thank you all for coming out in your colorful clothing to remember the life of Jan Casey and to celebrate what she meant to all of us. Thank you so much for the support you've given us, her family, over the past month. We've been totally overwhelmed by your response to mom's death, and we've been deeply moved to see that mom's love and generosity is still pouring through the world and through the people she loved. Your love and respect for mom have been beautiful to see. Mom was born in Swindon, England on May 7th, 1954, the day after her mother's birthday. She grew up with her mother and father her little sister Denise, and her youngest brother Dean. Her parents were both in the Air Force. Mom lived in Malta till age four when her family returned to England and began a life that was filled with constant change. She spent the remainder of her youth living in many different parts of England, sometimes changing schools three times in one year and would swiftly change her accent to match each new hometown. She loved her family's annual camping trips in Scotland and Wales. Both of Mum's siblings were very well acquainted with Mum's famous words. The same words that would one day come out of the mouths of her own children. Don't tell Mum. <laughs> Dean and Denise say that Mum was there for her siblings like a big sister rock star. She was their protector and dear friend. 
In her late teens, mom reluctantly moved to Canada when her family decided to immigrate here. She quickly got her own apartment and started saving money to return to her community in England. But when the time came, she realized that she had so fully integrated in, into her new life that she no longer wanted to leave Canada. She made Alberta her home for the next 47 years and never returned to the UK again. In her mid-20s, she married our father, built two rural houses from the ground up, designed a third one in town, and had four kids, and acquired two stepkids. She then went on to spend her 30s and 40s raising four of us on her own. Career-wise, she put her excellent shorthand and proofreading skills to use in high schools, real estate agencies, and the provincial department of agriculture. On the side, she created and ran a specialty chocolate business and peddled her art and other crafts at the farmer's market. Then she started working at Computronics, <coughs> where she filled an astonishing variety of professional roles for over 22 years. She even found, found herself a beau, a systems analyst, product manager, and single dad named Kirk C. Ray. Mom and Kirk held out until Kirk's son Michael and I were growing and out of the house and then they began to focus on building a life together. And what a life. <coughs> full of coast to coast travel, motorcycle camping, a home full of friends, food and literature, and dream trips to places like Alaska and Hawaii. Several years ago, they bought the land, 90 acres on the Pembina River with not a neighbor in sight. They built their off-grid dream cabin where they would spend nearly every weekend together for the next four years. So who was John Casey? We've compiled this tribute using many different people's contributions. At first, the scope and diversity of Mum's broad human network made us think it would be impossible to produce any kind of coherent eulogy for her. But in listening to so many of you over the past few weeks and remembering Mum together as a family, we've realized that actually the opposite is true. There's a striking consistency in how most people here experienced who Mum really was. Who was Jan Casey? Love. We haven't found a way to approach the question of who Mum was without relying on this word. Mum loved. And we think that her whole life could be summed up with that one phrase, Mum loved. So to ask who was Jan Casey is to ask what did she love? Mum certainly loved people. She loved her husband and her kids, her siblings and her parents, her friends, her co-workers and her neighbors. She loved her children's friends and their friends too. She also loved her friends' parents, her parents' friends, her co-workers' children, and her neighbor's dog. <laughs> I think you get the point. Mom loved her massage therapists, her waiters, her mail deliverers, and her professional network. She loved strangers she met in the elevator and people she met in the line at the bank. Mom really loved people. Mom was a person who took joy in giving her all. Because of this, she could make it look natural and effortless. She gave her family 100% of her time and care every single day, and yet still had 100% left to offer every other person she spent time with, not to mention to give her job. As you might have already noticed, she truly loved children. Uh, we all know how much delight she took in kids and babies. She stockpiled, stockpiled kids' clothing and toys in her basement for years, before anyone she knew was even expecting a child. She was deeply committed to her own children and to many other people's children as well. She sheltered, supported, educated, and nurtured dozens of kids. She squealed, as only she can, when she learned that she would finally have a grandchild of her own. And when Orion arrived, she was ready and waiting to give him the world. She knew what items your children liked best. And all of your children knew exactly where to find these items in her office or home. This week, looking through the photos that mom has kept over the years, we have laughed our heads off at the sheer number of photographs where she is holding a baby we do not recognize or bending low <laughs> to listen to someone else's young child. Yeah. 
Mom's heart for both adults and children is related to another great love of hers, beauty. Mom saw in 3D. When she looked at a landscape or a flower, she could grasp the essence of all that color and detail and reflected light and reproduce it with a paintbrush. She saw in light and color and had little time for square edges or straight lines. She was like this with people too. She wanted to look past, through, and into the person before her. She wanted to see their essence, their potential, and to invest in that and draw it out. Many of us look at mom's insight as a gift she had, but I don't think that empathy and insight come from having the gift of seeing. They come from giving the gift of looking. Mom's seemingly effortless attention to the big and small of all our lives and that desire to look for the best in us was actually a tireless labor of love and among her most important life's work. We've probably all teased mom about her so-called soft side, her all but complete inability to hide her emotions, hold back her tears, suppress her wild laughter, or disguise her intentions. But again, was this really an inability she had? Of course not. Just like mom actively chose to pursue insight and empathy, she also made a practice of choosing to offer transparency instead of inscrutability. She chose to let the world, with all its pain and beauty, flow through her and carry her along. She chose to feel life fully and to let it fill her right up. She chose to be sincere, genuine, and open-hearted, to risk being porous and permeable. She chose to yield to both her own feelings and to others. She chose to let herself flow out, and by doing so, to show others the way in. We laugh at how she would burst into tears over diaper commercials and Disney movies. But laugh as we may, Mom knew that when water flows freely, it can cut through stone. Her sense of who she was and her abiding trust in what she felt empowered her to risk exposing herself to others. She was not afraid to make herself vulnerable in front of us. In doing so, she demonstrated how vulnerability is a form of resilience, and how the harder something is, the more it needs our softness. Jen loved the little things. Jen was no small personality, as we all know. Her personal and professional achievements were substantial. She was a prolific and accomplished artist, a certified master gardener, she played a larger-than-life role at Computronics that went far beyond the usual limits of HR. She handled the complexities of doing payroll for more than 150 employees. She worked with an industriousness that was equaled only by the wealth of interruptions that she welcomed into our workday. She read thousands of books and never stopped learning. She was a radiant woman with a gigantic laugh who maintained an extensive social network. She was also a loving mother who successfully single-parented four wonderful children, not to mention the dozens of others that she took under her wing. And yet, our memory is filled with the almost impossible level of joy that Jan would experience in the simplest and smallest things. Butterflies, hummingbirds, Wildflowers in the forest, early in the morning deer in the meadow, a newborn calf, a reflection from a crystal or just plain glass, and of course, babies. Babies, babies, and more babies. Jan understood the power of the simple gesture of taking a moment to call someone and check in, of pausing to smell a rose, of surprising someone by recalling something they talked about maybe all of their children's names and what their goals were and what they had achieved in their lives. She, <clears throat> these things were not afterthoughts for Jan, but were the result of compassionate and constant forethought. 
She saw the world up close and gave so much focus to each person and thing that caught her love. The photographs she took are studies in the art of the miniature, a fuzzy, rusty underside of a Labrador, Labrador tea leaf, minuscule mushrooms sprouting from a shingle of bark, the tightly compressed center of a blossoming yellow rose, the tuft of lichen curling off a spruce branch, a blue jay's claw wrapped gently around a peanut. Among the photos we have of Jan is one I took in southern Alberta while on a hot and dusty hiking trail through dried grass and barren meadow. The picture shows her bending down to give the last of her drinking water to a single tiny flower struggling to survive in the beating sun and parched landscape. We can all learn from Jan to pay attention to the world we live in and to take care of it. Our mom loved to listen. So many of us are going forward with her sound advice in our hearts. But as her brother Dean pointed out, mom didn't give people advice. She counseled them. She was genu genuinely interested in people and curious about human nature. Her advice came naturally because she wanted to hear our stories. She was a careful listener who asked thought-provoking questions and paid close attention to the answer the way it was delivered, and how the person had responded to the question. She did all this behind the scenes, so you left a conversation with her feeling as though she had given you great advice, when really she had cleverly led you to discover your own truth. She knew how to exercise sound judgment without being judgmental. She was one of those rare souls who could be both strong and soft at the same time. She could take on other people's burdens, yet continue to project joy. She knew how to be both a safe harbor and the wind in our sails. Our mom also knew how to make the best of a situation. It may sound simple, but actually that is a skill that rests on, rests on an exceptional and intense ability to accept situations that are beyond control. Again and again, we have seen mom internally accept a tough situation and immediately move on to step two, protecting the people around her from that situation. We remember one time when we were kids and the hydro company cut off the power. Mom responded by making a fort with us out of blankets and inviting us on a living room camping trip. She pulled out flashlights and foam mattresses. We all had a blast singing bonfire songs until daylight returned. We didn't even wonder why the power was out because mom had sheltered us from the situation by turning it into a great party. So we have all experienced Jan's strength and selflessness at some point in our lives. So I feel the importance of sharing with you the way in which she stayed true to her nature in the last days of her illness. She carefully considered the order in which she told people of her illness. She ensured that they weren't alone and that someone had some, they had someone they could reach out for in support. She was concerned about interrupting the joy of her niece's wedding, so she delayed the message and swore others to secrecy. She warned everyone to drive safely when they came to see her. She told this to her brother twice. She arranged for a fellow patient interested in an HR job to shadow her boss. Then she let him know about it as well. She even became a sounding board for, and an advisor for the members of her nursing team. And finally, she followed up with each and every one of us multiple times to make sure that we were all okay. So goodbye, dear mom. Thank you for all you have taught us and for all that you have left behind. You touch so many lives. Your love of human nature, your upbeat energy, and your love of simple pleasures will continue to shape and inspire us. So rest in peace, Mom. There's a lot that we could hate about your untimely death, but if your example has taught us anything, it's that there's ever so much to love in this life. Thank you. Uh, 
thank you so much, Kirk and Casey and Lee and Aaron and Kyle for this beautiful tribute to a beautiful woman. Now I know you all have your own memories of the time that you shared with Jan. So I'm going to invite you to kind of turn within for a moment and bring to mind some of the ways that Jan touched your lives as we share a moment of silent reflection, remembering Jan. like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. strong but you needed proof you saw her bathing on the roof her beauty and the moonlight oh hallelujah well she tied you to her kitchen chair she broke your throne and cut your I've seen your flag on the marble arch. Our love is not a victory march. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 God above, but all I've ever learned from love was how to shoot somebody who outdrew you. It's not a cry that you hear at night. It's not someone who's seen the light. It's a cold and broken
know, as we celebrate Jan today and say goodbye, her death actually also serves us all as a reminder that nothing in this physical world is permanent. So we all need to make the most of the time that we have here. You know, we hear that all the time, I know, but it somehow hits home in a different way when a loved one dies. It seems to give us the impetus to contemplate what living means to us and what we want to experience before we die. You know, as you all know, Jan's, one of Jan's passions was gardening. This is all from Jan's garden, by the way. You know, and the basic principle of gardening is change and growth, just like life. One, of, one rule of thumb that has been true since the beginning of time is that change is ine inevitable. Nothing ever stays the same. So I just want to share just a few little life lessons using gardening as a metaphor. You know, it all starts with the dirt. You need the right soil for the plants you want to grow, and you need the right mental and emotional soil to grow into the kind of person you most want to be. And you know, it's important to do some long-range planning. You have to consider the future if you want a beautiful garden for the whole season. You know, different plants bloom at different times. And life works that way too. A little planning ahead goes a long way to limiting potential growing pains and enjoying the beauty of the process and smoothing out the future. And turn your face toward the sun if you want good energy. You know, most variety of plants depend on sunlight to help them grow. We all need the sunlight of optimism and a positive perspective on life if we too want to grow. And it takes some weeding to make a garden grow. Individual plants require trimming, cutting, culling to thrive. And we need to weed out those plants that we don't want. In people, the ability to weed out those things that just create clutter and don't serve or that are done is important. And plant when the time is right and enjoy the fruits of your labor. There's a season for everything, a time to plant and a time to harvest and a time to enjoy the fruits of your labors. So it is with life. There's a time for building things up and a time for letting go and a time for enjoying what we've created. Sometimes we can get so busy just doing that we forget that we need to relax and take life in and enjoy. And remember, surprises can be perfectly delightful. Sometimes something bizarre might surprise you in the garden. For whatever reason, you find a totally unexpected plant growing in the middle of your yard. You know, it could be a pleasant surprise. Life works like that too. All those surprises may upset the balance and change our routine momentarily. It seems the unexpected always works itself out somehow, and more often than not, it's eventually welcome. And bottom line, just like the bottom line for Jan, it's all about love. Ultimately, the rewards for gardening and living can't be measured in time or dollars or possessions. It's only about love. We do it for love. Love is the reward. Love is all that matters. And love is the only thing that lasts. Just a little food for thought for all of us to ponder as we reflect on our own lives going forward. And I have no doubt that what Jan would want most for all of you is to be tending the garden of your life with passion, with love, and with care. And in the end, that's the best way you can honor Jan's life as well. And so now I'd like to invite Jan's sister Denise and Kyle's wife Alicia to come up and share a poem with us. So this poem was chosen by my sister's friend, Anne. Thank you, Anne. Mourn not for me. 
Mourn not for me in blacks and greys, with solemn songs and stiffly circled flowers. Creep not for me in sombre cars, ant-like to the graveyard. For I would die as I have tried to live, cheerfully. Let flowers smile in happy sprays, their heads a toss, their colors gay. Yes, let there be flowers, bright cheeky snaps, or marguerites, or daisy moms with dancing leaves, or marigolds. Sing out for me in joyful vein, the king of love my shepherd is. Lead on, O king. Then let them toss the lot to flame and scatter ashes where they may, but do not stay. For I have loved this lively world, especially the sprightly things. I cannot bear to give you pain. We'll meet again. We, we love, love you, you Jen. Jen. Thank you, Denise and Alicia. And so, Jan, as you journey on, may flowers line your path and the sunshine light your days. May songbirds serenade you all along the way. May a rainbow be above you in a sky that's clear and blue. May tall trees in the greenwood be there to shelter you. May you feel the gentle breeze and be protected from the rain. And may you then rest in a beautiful garden until we meet again. And we pray. Beloved creator and sustainer of all, we thank you for the gifts of life and of love. Today we particularly thank you for the gift of Jan's life and the love she shared, which was a gift to us and to many others. We are grateful for the wonder of human relationships the ability to know another and be known, to accept another and be accepted, to live in the depth of meaning together. And we are grateful, Lord, that your ever-present love is now and always surrounding every person here, just as it continues to surround Jan in her new dimension in living. This we pray in love and in gratitude. Amen. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of our, for, the formal part of the celebration of Jan's life today. Again, on behalf of the family, thank you so much for being here to remember and to honor Jan and to support the family. And they want you to know that you're invited to join them now for reception, and that'll be in the reception center, which is just out these doors and down the way. It's in the building that's adjacent to us. And that'll be a time for you to share some of your memories as well as some food and refreshments. So there is going to be an hour-long video playing in the reception center. That was created some nine years ago by Casey uh, from a trip to France that she took with, with Jan back in 2009. And you're also going to find a number of Jan's paintings there. These are samples, and there are several of them over there as well for you to enjoy. And of course, as I mentioned, all these flowers in front of me and behind me come from Jan's garden. So uh, there will also be some note paper and cards in the reception center. And what the family asks is that you write down a story or a favorite memory of the time that you shared with Jan, because they're going to build kind of a story book out of it. So uh, they appreciate all your condolences. But if you could, on these cards, stick to stories and memories of Jan, that would be really appreciated. And there'll be a container in there for you to put those cards in after you're done. And so I just ask that you wait now, and uh, the attendants will lead us out of the chapel. And finally, you know, Jan enriched the lives of all she touched. May we leave inspired by her gentle and her kind soul. Let us value each breath we take and every life we touch, knowing that life and love truly are everlasting. Many blessings to you all.
she gets her way in and she lets the river answer that you've always been her lover and you want to travel with her and you want to travel blind and you know that she will trust you for you touched her perfect body with your mind and Jesus was a sailor when he walked upon the water and he spent a long time watching from his lonely wooden tower and when he knew for certain Drowning and could see him. He said, All men will be sailors then until the sea shall free them. But he himself was broken long before the sky would open. Forsaken, almost human, he sank beneath your wisdom like a stone. travel with him and you want to travel blind and you think maybe you'll trust him for he's touched your perfect body with his mind now Suzanne takes your hand and she leads you to the river she is wearing feathers from the salvation army counter and the sun pours down like honey on our lady of the harbor and she shows you where to look among the garbage and the flowers there are heroes in the sea there are children in the morning they are leaning away for love that way forever while Suzanne holds the mirror and you want to travel with her and you want to travel blind and you know you can trust her for she's touched your perfect body with her mind Thank you. 